I'll just start the recording and uh, bam, there we go, guys. Um, so this is so exciting. Like, um, this is a sequel to Pastor Isaac's teaching from, I'm sure you remember the conference. When was it? Is it quite a while ago? Do you guys remember when it was? 17th. 17th. So is that, yeah, gee, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, and it's so cool, you know, how, you know, every day we see the fruits, you know, coming out, like some people will be sharing later on, you know, what we've learned is just so great. And we still carry it on today. Like faith is such a big thing. But, yeah. you know, before we get too excited and start talking about that, you know, let's introduce our panelists today. Today, we've got some amazing people. Uh, yeah. Let's start. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you know them, but um, let's go. If you guys can just, you know, say your name, your age. And what you do. So if you work, if you study, what you study, you know, all that, all that jazz. You can start um, with Naud. Yeah. yeah. Um, my name's Naud. Um, I'm 19. Um, I'm not working right now. I'm going uni. Um, but yeah, I'm studying psychology still. So, studying yeah. psychology. Um, Which year? <clears throat> I'm going into my second year now. Second year. Nice. Yeah. Man. Oh, wow. yeah. Then we can probably go to Sharon. <laughs> Uh, I'm Sharon, uh, 21 years old, and I'm in uni. I'm studying acting in my second year, and I also work at Starbucks. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> and then Abby? Uh... Um, my name is Abigail Obaranatana, and I'm 21 years old. I'm here in London just to still know where I'm going to study. <laughs> I'm still figuring out, <laughs> but right now I'm thinking about adult nursing. Adult nursing, sick. But I mean, you know, guys, these people right here, um, you know, we all know Naad from his podcast, right? 2911. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> uh, what is it on? Is it on Spotify? Is it on Spotify? You guys, if, if you don't know about it, this is the time. Music to our Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> trust. YouTube. Did you say YouTube? Yeah. You too as well. Uh, Come on, you can see, you can see still, see and see. All right, yeah, these right. guys like they have a group of you know. I'm sure everybody knows, but if you don't know, this is the time you should go and look for it. Yeah, uh, they got like a group. They always talk about these stuff, and you know, now it's not a simple guy. And then we got Sharon. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows Sharon uh, for her songs, her singing. God has seriously blessed her with her voice. I mm -hmm. mean. You know, everyone is a testament right here. Even the first time I came to church, I remember. And now, you know, she's writing songs and stuff. She'll tell you about it. It's uh, some crazy stuff. So, you know, and then we got Abigail, which I don't think no one doesn't know about her. I mean, you know, <laughs> I've been working with her. And I must say, like, as a leader, I've never seen, you know, somebody like that, especially at this age, 21. I mean, you know, it's like the wisdom and stuff like that, it's just mad. But basically what I'm trying to say here is the panelists we have today are, you know, God has seriously blessed them. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I can't wait to this. I mean, this for me is a huge honor. I must say guys, I haven't said this to you, but this is a, a massive honor for me, you know, to be discussing about faith, like such a big topic with you guys. Um, so, you know, I can't wait. Let's just, let's just get on with it, right? So, um, so, the topic is about faith. Uh, let's start. I mean, we learned, we had like a three-day conference, right, with Pastor Isaac. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's on YouTube. Um, and so first, you know, before we just enter and start with anything, like, could some of you guys just tell me why should we discuss about faith? I mean, why is it such an, I mean, there's so many other things we can talk about. Why faith? So we can probably start with Sharon. Maybe you can, you can tell us why. Um. Why faith? That's a good question. I think in terms of like one thing that Pastor Isaac said is that it is a scriptural, like found, it's a foundation for us. Um, oh. I guess with anything that's foundational, we need to know it properly. Otherwise, if the foundation is not stable, then everything else that is built upon it is not stable too. 100%. And I think so many people, I hear it all the time, people throw away the word faith as if it's got no weight to it mm. but actually as we discuss further faith is so relevant especially in um christianity to receiving a lot of what god has given us faith is what brings it into reality so mm. discussing faith and true faith and what faith really is actually can help us access those things so it's more mm. than just oh you now i have faith or but understanding why you have faith what yeah. it means to have faith, what faith does so discussing it is important because um 
truth you know the truth sets you free in it so 100%, 100%. Yeah. but like it's also very core to the bible i don't know like yeah. not do you have anything to talk about that yeah like, yeah um i was gonna say that um mm -hmm. like our faith like faith in general for christianity is very distinguishing um it kind of separates us from all the other religions because um we're, we're justified by our faith and we're going to go on to that later but um we're justified by our faith and with other religions it's not that your faith sets you free from sin or justifies your actions but it's your works but um it's really interesting how christianity is like totally different to that and you know knowing that it's faith that justifies us is very important for every christian to have a firm understanding and a firm knowledge of how faith works how it is that it justifies you why it is that it justifies mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you can stand firm in your faith and you can stand firm believing that you're a christian and you know when people ask you questions about it you know you're you're able to answer you know what i'm saying 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly i mean life you know christianity is a walk of faith anyway like yeah. abby could you tell us like how hollow christianity can be if you don't have faith mm. i mean everything's about faith just just from like if you think about how jesus came to this world yeah that mm -hmm. a virgin woman pregnant of him all that requires faith. It's like you can't prove it scientifically. Mm. So everything we do is by faith. Christianity, a Christian without faith is not Christian. It, it can't because you're going to need proof for every single thing. If God says, I'm there and you can't see him, mm. then it, it means that it requires faith for you to believe that he's always next to you. So I mm. think faith for Christianity is must like is the essential, is the essential thing because it motivates you, it encourages you, it gives you strength, it gives you everything. 100%, 100%. Mm -hmm. But also beyond that, like, uh, do you guys know, like, how many times the word faith is repeated throughout the Bible? I know Pastor Isaac told us about it. Um, sure. It's pretty, do you know, yeah. do you know now? Do you remember? Do you remember, Abby? E, e, e. I'm not sure. I think. Yeah. Come on, yeah, come on, give I it a Come on. Uh, <laughs> best show, it, I don't, I don't want to guess you, and get it wrong. I don't right, guess right. wrong. <laughs> Go on, give it a shot, give it a shot. Um, I think it was in the 50s or 60s. It was in the 50s Yeah, 60s, but also it depends. In the Old Testament. Yeah, in the Old Testament. Oh, oh it depends. The I have a, that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. What uh, about in the New Testament? I think it's more astonishing when you see it. Yeah, exactly. When you see it in the New Testament. 244 yeah. times. Oh, yeah, no. But, I mean, um, bro, if, if you see a word repeated this many times, you must pay attention to it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. this is how core... Mm -hmm faith mm -hmm. is so i mean this is why you should listen right this is why you should keep attentive right this is the whole point this is why we're telling mm -hmm. you why we're discussing about this topic mm -hmm. um and so all right so now we know you know how important faith is and all that so all right wh what is faith right i mean now can you tell us what faith is um in the bible um the one verse that um even that what the one chapter where it's heavy heavy speaking on faith is hebrews chapter 11 and in verse 1, if I can read it to you, it says this. Yeah. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the, and this is what the ancients were commended for. So um, you can see faith, like for me reading that verse, I see that faith is um, it's our evidence. Like it's not <laughs> that we need evidence for our faith, but our faith itself is our evidence. And you ask yourself, what is the evidence for? And the verse tells you, it makes... It's, it's evidence for the things that are intangible, things that don't seem real, things that you can't like see or feel or touch, but it makes them real. It makes them real to you. You can see, see that they're real. So like an example I can give is like, for example, um, for example, um, peace. Like peace isn't tangible. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't yeah. really, you can't really, peace isn't something that you can touch or you can, you can, you, can, you just sort of, sort of feel it, right? But with faith, like no matter what you go through, no matter the circumstances you're in, you have you have that peace. You know what I'm saying? And you know that you have that peace because you have faith. But if you didn't have faith, then you wouldn't know that you had that peace. You wouldn't be able to say confidently that you I have that peace. But it's faith that makes it intangible, very tangible, very real. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. I remember Pastor Isaac was also mentioning all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It does, it's yeah. so core, right? It's so core exactly. how important faith is. We go back to why we're discussing this again. Mm -hmm. um, Sharon, do you have anything you want to say? Like, especially even about the verse, I don't know, whatever, you know, what, what it speaks to you. Um, not to kind of summarize it nicely, yeah. but what he was saying before about um, how Christianity is different from other religions, 
um, how it is based on us for faith, as Ephesians 2, 8 says, for we've been saved mm -hmm. by grace through faith. So the basis of our salvation is grace. Um, and the means that we access that is through faith alone. So mm -hmm. faith is not a work, but um, in our faith, like it says in Romans 10, we are justified for when one believes in the heart, they mm -hmm. are justified. So really and truly it's um, a means to receive that salvation so it becomes a reality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Amen. Amen. So amen. it's, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's mad. It's a nice thing, isn't it? It's a nice thing. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, I mean, we always see it, you know, in our lives, especially as Christians, right? Like everything is through faith. Um, just like also the verse says it very well. Uh, Abby, do you have anything you want to add? Um, I remember he was also mentioning mm. about that faith is our uh, insurance, insurance, mm. and it's our it's a confidence, um, it's a mm. conviction. Yeah. So, yeah. So as we were saying, because it's mentioned so so many times in the Bible, faith it has a lot of things to do with us. Mm. Hundred percent. Especially when you see right when you see where the word faith is derived from. Um, mm. Another question does anyone know where the word faith comes from um, <laughs> I, I can't pronounce it I can't pronounce it um, it starts yeah, something like that right Pater, something like that yeah, yeah I'm not really good at Greek but, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no one is where no one is going <laughs> yeah <laughs> can't be like Pastor Isaac word. he's good at that stuff so. <laughs> yeah I try I just try man. I just try no. yeah <laughs> But I think it's interesting, you know, so what does it mean? It means to persuade, right? Yeah. Um, but I love how he said it's strongly related to obedience. Mm. Yes. Right? Does anyone want to say anything about that? You know how your faith is connected to you obeying. Because like, you know, if you think about it, right? Um you're seeing stuff that do not exist. You're believing in stuff, you know, that don't mm -hmm. exist. Even your salvation, see? Uh, mm -hmm. And then, especially when you believe in the word of God, right? Yeah. You know, having faith in the word of God. Um, mm -hmm. You're obeying God's word. You're obeying a God that you probably don't even see. And it is mm -hmm. through faith that you do it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I found mm -hmm. that, yeah, mm -hmm. that is really key to what faith is yeah. as well. It's strongly connected to obeying. Yeah. Even, even, mm -hmm. even to add to what you're saying, um, yesterday, I think I was reading, I was reading Proverbs chapter 16, and um, it said, there was a verse, um, if you remember it, it said how um, the Lord, um, the Lord establishes your steps. Let me, let me turn to it now quickly. Um, yeah, Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs 16, verse, um, verse 9, um, it says, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. And um, it's that last part that I want to bring that attention to you, like how it says that the Lord is the one who establishes our steps. Like when you're talking about faith, um, it makes sense that it goes hand in hand with obedience because faith is something that you're not, you're not known to, like it's not common to you, you know? Like in this world, like there's, there's really nothing that you have to put your faith in, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you just believe, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm You believe doctors will help, you believe this, and, but there's nothing you put your faith in because everything is very tangible. We live in a world that, everything has to be a reality or it's not true. Yeah. So it makes very much sense that obedience has to tie in with faith. And, um, and you know, that verse where it talks about um, the Lord establishing your steps. Yeah. Unless you have obedience, unless you have obedience, um, no matter how much faith you have, if you don't have obedience, yeah. you can't work in that faith. And we'll, we'll touch on it later, but you can't work in that faith. You can't like go the steps that the Lord's established for you. And, um, and it's quite, it's quite, and what I like about you know Christianity, what I like about our faith is that yeah. it, it ties in that like we said earlier with everything. Like it's it's because it's the core principle, because it's the foundational principle. Like it go, it ties in with everything that is to do with Christianity. Like obedience, love, it all just ties in with faith, and they all tie in with each other. And it kind of like it's kind of beautiful the way it's, it's kind of really beautiful the way like the whole religion, like how our faith is. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, for us to for us to be like so in like for it to be so interconnected like, i can read one verse and you know the word of god like being the word of god you can it can give me so many 
interpretation that 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 all that all kind of like touch on the same things or even different things, and um and that's all down to faith as well because it's it's the obedience tying in with faith and you know you see if other other topics that you know we speak about whether it was love or whatever like it all ties in together at the end of the day but yeah exactly. it's like it makes sense. Mm. I think also like you know especially when you give that first you know when you give that first obedience and then you see more and yeah. more that compels you even more. Uh, now we'll be testifying about that later on. Uh, yeah, spoiler alert. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> yeah. but I mean, Sorry. how important. Uh -huh. Even like, you know, there's this, um, I'm sure you guys know Rev Zacharias, but he was talking about yeah. like how the moral law is so important in, um, you know, just obeying it from the beginning. I mean, of course, our life, we have grace, right? Uh, we're in a different level, but just even having that, you know, like, okay, I have God who I listen to and not just to myself and I obey him before myself. Um, and when you defy that, you know, uh, I'm sure you guys know even Nietzsche, you know, the famous philosopher, notorious for saying uh, God is dead. But what he really meant by that is that, you know, philosophers like Voltaire and stuff, especially during those days, they were promoting the idea of self-righteousness, right? Like you have your own laws, you have your relative morality. And when you destroy this, like the effects and, you know, the way Nietzsche predicted, you know, like the destruction that could come, like straight after that, this is the end of the 19th century, right? We're just going into the 1900s. And just after that, people, you know, they have their own righteousness, right? And then what happens, which is so shocking, is you have the First World War, the Second World War, the Cold War, all of these wars where you have, like, the 20th century was the bloodiest century by far, yeah, no. right? Yeah, it makes yeah. sense, it makes yeah. sense. Like, relative, like, I was even, wow, this is actually crazy. This, mm -hmm. this is what I mean by, like, the Word of God is on. I was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, in the Bible study. Um, we were talking about, it was even in Proverbs 16, how um, it says, verse 2 says, um, man thinks that his way is pure. Let me, yeah, it says, yeah, how man open it up, open it up, man. Which verse? We'll open, it up, we'll open it up, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, Proverbs yeah. 16, verse 2. All, all a person's ways seem pure to them, but the motives are weighed by the Lord. And like, you can see that, like, the issue with the issue with relative, um, like, it's, just, it's that if I think what I'm doing is right, like, then I have an excuse to do whatever I want, yeah. and you have an excuse to do whatever you want. And it, it really becomes a problem when things like, when things like when you don't have that moral guideline, when you don't have that um let's call it a line for example, where where you you judge yourself by you yeah. that standard that you set yourself. And and it's by faith that we have that standard, that we have that moral objectivity, that Christ God is our moral objectivity. Like to him is where we look at the standard to see what's right and wrong. There's no blurry, there's no in between. It's yeah. just right and wrong. And this is what I mean by like in Hebrews eleven one, how the, and the intangible becomes tangible see someone that doesn't believe in god and doesn't know god exists and like they don't they don't believe in it it's intangible to them but by faith we can be morally good all the time and that's that's because what you call it that's because we have that's because we have faith that it becomes mm -hmm. tangible for us that being morally good is is very achievable for us yeah exactly yeah. especially through christ um, yeah definitely through christ yeah, yeah. um I can see Sharon's nodding her head a lot. Do you have anything to add, Sharon? <laughs> well, it's just what you're, you guys are saying is is true. I was just thinking about faith. Um, not just um, brings obedience or faith comes in hand in hand with obedience, but also an action as well. Yeah. And I, after this conference was, you know when you hear stuff when people are saying, or, like, or even if you hear like um, when you're reading the words, and you get it, but you don't, like, it's in your mind, so you agree yeah. that it's right, because it's the way yeah. the book is right, but it, it's not a reality for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that faith produces works, and that actually we should, not that we work for our faith, but our faith allows us to work. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing Isaac said is that faith always brings obedience and action. Mm and actually i was reading this morning acts chapter eight in terms of obedience yeah. but the spirit of the lord said to philip to go um to the south of jerusalem i believe mm -hmm. from jerusalem to gaza and he went and there he found the ethiopian eunuch and um saw him reading isaiah and went to speak to him and the ethiopian man heard the gospel so philip preached to him Mm. and he he got the first thing he said is let me get baptized and he was rejoicing 
And so if he hadn't have been obedient to the spirit of the Lord, would that have mm -hmm. happened? And this, even if you think back to before um, Pentecost, when Jesus said to, this, to the apostles, wait here mm. and um, I'll send you my spirit. Yeah. And mighty things happen. I think obedience is something that we sometimes might overlook because in our day and age, it's do what you want, do what you think is right. You yeah. Know, yeah. Follow your, your heart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 In, our, in our nature, like, we want to be our own God. We want to be, mm. we want to follow our own ways. We want to do our own thing. Mm. Like, mm. being dependent on God is such a, like, ugh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, yeah. you know? Um, but, yeah, obedience is key, man. And yeah. even um, Nod was, to, like, speaking about, um, the real meaning of love um, in Second John one six, and talking about yeah. how when you love God, it's actually that you're obedient to Him. That's true love, like yeah, yeah. your allegiance, as an order to say yes. to God fully. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's allegiance. And you only do that when you have faith in yeah. the God that you serve. Mm -hmm. you know? Faith yeah. to know that actually He exists, that mm -hmm. He is, that He says who He says He is is who He is. Yeah. and that his word is true so amen amen 100 yeah abby i can hear your voice in the background so <laughs> do you have something to say so, i feel like yeah. you have something to say yeah <laughs> i agree with all what they say but um i was reading roman last time yeah and it reminded me again about the conference so roman 1 5 uh can someone read it because i don't have the english okay. version romans 1 5 yeah Yeah, should I read it? ESV. I got ESV. Yeah. Fine. So, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations. Right? Is that the one? Yeah. 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 So I like how, like, if you read all Roman, the whole, the whole, the whole book, I like how Paul clarifies that uh, he has not been sent by Christ to get mm. people to obey the law of Moses. Yeah. Uh, that he has actually been sent to bring about um, about obedience to faith in Christ. Exactly. And um, mm. which means, in other in other words, like for for people to believe in Christ, um, and to refuse to believe in Jesus, it is to disobey to disobey his call. Mm -hmm. um, believing is an obedience because. Um, both in becoming a Christian, a Christ, and working in Christ through our lives. That's what it makes it to be obedience. Yeah. yeah. Because mm. you have to be obedient in order to follow the word of God. Mm. And by following the word of God, that, that's where you get the faith from. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm sure, yeah, we'll talk about this more later. Uh, yeah. Especially, I keep on mentioning this, but there's, you know, not our testimony uh, speaks about, you know, how once you give that, and then he just comes more and more. Um, yeah. And it's such a good point you bring up, Abby, but we, we can spend years just discussing this part, but we need to move on, unfortunately. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, coming back to what everybody's saying, you know, how obedience and stuff plays a part in your faith, like how faith, you know, is strongly based on obedience as well. I yeah. think like a key figure in this is definitely, definitely Abraham, right? Um, can one of you tell me a bit more about Abraham? Like, what is he known for? You know, just a tiny bit about him. Mm. Um, I think even um, it's in Hebrews 11, yeah. it starts off talking about um, Abraham as well. But, um, and even in Romans chapter 4, I think it talks about the faith that Abraham had. Or yeah. Romans chapter 5, one of them. But um, Abraham was, um, he was, he was, he was a simple man. Like, he came um he came god called him out and um he asked him to leave where he was to like go with like go with his family to a place that god had set for him and um he was he was obedient to it and you know he 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 was he was known i feel like most people know abraham for um either two things um mm -hmm. the promise that god gave him about having children as plentiful as the stars in the sky and also um what you call it um the second thing was when his faith was tested at his most. When so basically the backstory is that he struggled to have a child with his wife and his wife Sarah. And um, you know, they were struggling and they were growing really old and they were kinda like 
they were they were kind of like losing they were kind of losing hope like is this really going to happen yeah and um so yeah so abraham you know like in his in his moment of weakness um he he slept with his slave um his his wife's slave um and you know he had a he had a child but um then like, the amazing thing is that um he eventually did have a child with his his, with his wife sarah and like it was it was to him that was the greatest thing ever because he finally had a child that mm-hmm. he was so longing he was longing for and um it was only a matter of it was only a matter of time and god asked him to um sacrifice his his only son and um abraham like he he he, he was so ready to do it like he even he went up to that. he was he was gonna kill him he was gonna kill um his son because um God God requested it as a test of faith, and um it was at that moment then I think it was the angel came and you know he stopped he stopped and he stopped Abraham, but um that was what I would say like as a child growing up that was what I knew Abraham for yeah the man who nearly killed his son yeah. because God asked him to, and um back then I never realized it was a story of faith I just thought it was a story of obedience but mm-hmm. now that I think about it. It's very much a story of faith as it is a story of obedience because yeah. he believed that he believed in the promise that God he believed like he just believed that it was gonna be for the good, you know what I'm saying? Like he you know it was like mm-hmm. like we said earlier, like the intangible will of God, like what we do not know, what we can't see, like he believed in it so much, had faith in it that it was real. So he knew that killing his son was only a means for better ends. Mm-hmm. And um and to, to have that kind of faith, it's very it's an honorable thing. And you know that's why, like I think, like me and my friends, we refer to chap- Hebrews chapter eleven as the um, as the hall of faith. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is where men of God, is where, like, men of God are. Um, is that like, men of God are exalted for their faith? Like, if you go through it, like you see, like some honorable mentions, like guys like um, Abraham, Adam, like um, Jesus is in it. Like these guys, like uh, Moses, like they they were tested. Their faith was tested at the most. And and they passed the black flying colors and um, yeah so like you know that's that's what Abraham was known for and that's why like he's he's a pillar in our um, sort of faith yeah. in many religions as well. Mm, true, true. But yeah. I also like the fact that you know like mm. nowadays we wouldn't go to a country that we don't know any yeah. everything about. Like <laughs> I remember like when I was planning to move to London, I made sure I know every single thing. I even yeah. came earlier. To check, like if any, if everything was as I thought, yeah. I'm gonna be comfortable in everything. But the fact that he just trusted in God, he just had faith, and he didn't even, you know, he was all new into the religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because if we see the background of him, he was like they believed in magic stuffs and everything. He just yeah. heard this amazing voice, and he was like, "Go out, and I will tell you where." I'm like, "Where? What?" You know, so it's so amazing by he, that he just trusted God in every single thing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. yeah, so Abraham. He's... But you know, why are you there? Why are you there? Like, tell us a bit more about his faith. Like, in what aspect of God did he believe? Like, in what did he believe? Because, you know, there's this important thing is where you put your faith on. It's not just having faith for the sake mm-hmm. of having faith. Mm-hmm. Tell us a bit more about that, Abby. Yeah, so... He believed in everything in God, but also, as Pastor Isaac was mentioning in the conference, uh, God has revealed in him with a new name, which is Yehovah. Yeah. And that name, it includes a lot of things. If you know the meaning of that name, you don't need anyone next to you. And, that, <laughs> and that, I think that's the reason for why Abraham felt like, you know what, I have him. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I have someone that can be next to me. It doesn't matter where, he, he can be there for me. Um, and exactly. I think we can discuss it later on. I don't know uh, the twelve points. Uh, we can mention some of them. Yeah, go ahead. Please but mention them. They, Please. You don't have to mention every single one, but you know, just mention a few that you know come close to you. So one was the the Lord that heals you, and that is Jehovah Rufeka. Sorry for my accent. And the Lord appears, and the Lord manifests. Mm. Um, the Lord is peace. The Lord is complete. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm-hmm. The Lord is our righteousness. Mm-hmm. Um, Lord is presence. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and more. But you know, like just those points can make you actually to have faith and 
mm-hmm. move or even sacrifice your own son because you know that he's there with you and you know that he kind of thinks that your son is not able to like he chooses to be with God than having his son, the son that he has been praying for years. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I think he really understood deeply the meaning. Um, he had experienced the relationship with God in order to do this. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He knew exactly in what he was believing, right? He was not just believing yes, in a random did. thing. But like what that exactly. brings to attention yeah. to me is, um, you know, you have, you know, you have this faith that the Bible is describing right now. We're just looking at Abraham, but there's like tons, you know, if you really read your word properly, it's like a lot. Uh, but like even, you know, having your faith in Jesus and stuff. But then there's these people that say, you know, it's called the law of attraction, right? Yeah. You just believe that something will come and then it will just come. Like they use this. I don't know if you guys heard about it. I'm sure you guys heard it. Like, you know, the book, The Secret. Don't. Is, you don't. All right. Let me explain it to you. So. Well, someone uh, said that I was watching something actually uh-huh. um, it kind of confused me so I stopped but um, <laughs> it was saying that apparently Jesus used the law of attraction and I was like oh did he? <laughs> um, when he says to the um, disciples you've never done this before but ask you in my name and it will be granted to you Yeah, they tried mm-hmm. to use that to say that Jesus said the law of attraction now I don't know but I'm willing to open my ears to hear and learn mm-hmm. today is the law of attraction similar to manifestation or is it? I think so. Is it? Um, here's, here's what I've heard. Like, yeah, so from my understanding, while you discuss yeah. it, I'll just double check it so we're as accurate as possible. But the law of attraction is like, um, so like say you want a big house, right? Yeah. You want a big house, so you want some money. So you're like, you sit down in your home and you're just like, I don't know, you can meditate it or whatever. I mean, I, I'm sure there's different versions. I'm not sure if there's just one version, but this is the one I've heard. So like you can just meditate it, like imagine it, like, you know, and imagine that you're going to have it. So like have faith or believe that you're going to receive this thing. And then every action you do will bring it closer and closer to it. And one day you'll get that thing you really desire and believe in. Yeah. No, that's it. Speaking it, you know, when people say, oh, speak it into existence. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Oh, exactly. Nonsense. <laughs> no, but oh, even, yeah. Yeah, you know, even like Sharon's example where Christ was to the when Christ saw the disciples, um, if you say in my name, what happened? Like, I don't think that counts as manifestation either, though, because mm-hmm. manifestation is the emphasis on like the ability that you have. Mm-hmm. So, um, it's, it's it's heavy on the idea that you can make a means for yourself. But what Christ was saying was there's a means for you if you come through me, you know what I'm saying? And like, that's, that's something that's always been, um, it's been a known thing about God. Like if you go through him, then it's much easier than if you go against him. You know what I'm saying? If you go nah, yeah. out him, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's so like in relation to what Sharon was saying, but um, not even my friend, um, my friend, um, he, he, he like, he's, he studies this kind of stuff in it. Like mm-hmm. He has knowledge about this kind of stuff in it. And um, yeah, no, nah, he, he made a video um, about it, but um yeah, manifestation isn't 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 the one. I'll be honest. I don't think I don't think it's something that um, Christians should like indulge in or something that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You should be careful of whether it's faith or you know law of attraction or manifestation. Whether it is like there's there's kind of differences that there's quite subtle, but they make a big difference. For like, mm-hmm. the biggest one, for example, is that faith isn't um, isn't about you. It's about God. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. law of attraction and manifestation. It's everything to do with you and nothing to do with God. It's almost like you're your own God. Like I am my own God, sort of thing. I and mean, that's kind of dangerous. Yeah. It's very dangerous, actually. Yeah. But um, yeah. What were you saying, bro? No, I keep on going. Abby, I feel like you want to say something. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no. I'm All right. Okay. okay. I no didn't problem. even know this law existed. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I didn't know either. Like, I feel like this kind of stuff, like. You know, I don't even know how I got to know it. I think it was, you know, just my friends. Like, they, were, they were speaking about it and I thought, oh, let me see what they're talking about. Or like, um, yeah, but it's very important that, you know, we kind of like, as Christians, we kind of go see what everyone else is doing and mm-hmm. what everyone else yeah, is saying. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. we don't know what they're saying and we don't know what angle to approach them or what, yeah. um, what mm-hmm. to say to them, you know what I'm saying? That we need to be very um, knowledgeable in the world, but not yeah. on the world sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed.
it's more like you know it's this new age kind of thing um i think yeah, it's also related to buddhism in a way let me yeah. read to you what i found so this is from the law of attraction it's oh. a website mm. it says simply put the law of attraction is the ability to attract onto your lives whatever we are focusing on right mm. it believes that regardless of age nationality or religion religious belief mm. uh -huh, we are all susceptible yeah. to the laws which govern the universe including yeah. the laws of attraction it is the law of attraction which uses the power of the mind, so the power of the mind, to translate whatever is in our thoughts and, and materialize them into reality. So it's talking about the power of the mind to materialize them into reality. And it's, and it's saying this is a universal law. So it's like kind of a physical law. Like there's, there's a lot of debate, like also a lot of scientists go against this. Um, so like compare that to Christianity, right? To Abraham and his walking faith. Mm -hmm. um, what distinctions do you see from what I just read? Because like, you know, this is, they are believing in the power of the mind and, yeah. right? And compared to what Abby was reading the whole time, um, these are like two very distinct things. Yeah. It's like your power, your mental ability to bring things into existence. But here's the interesting thing. What they say is, um, like by you believing in that you act in a different way and so the things come to you yeah if you see what i mean um yeah i don't know how much do you guys do you think there's a bit of truth into it um uh, i know, agree with you. I think, yeah go ahead go ahead no, it's okay, it's okay. i think it's like you know when non-christian people try to understand the bible mm. and then they try to you know to bring like chemistry physics and everything in order to understand because that's their ability yeah, yeah, yeah but you can't no one can define what faith is like how to have faith how do we how does things come because it just told us like have faith that's all mm -hmm. it doesn't tell you like oh put your mind in this set uh, at this time and this time at this place you have to be here in order for that to have faith it doesn't say so faith comes through the word of god and that's all we know and by listening oh. so i i believe like any law those kind of things they just try to make it like you know because the bible is too heavy for a normal human being unless you don't have the spirit into you to understand mm -hmm. it it's too much <laughs> so you can bring any law but that doesn't define anything uh, you know what I mean? yeah. Go um no i was gonna say even um like Oh no no no! Don't don't tell me I forgot. Oh no no! <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, it's a okay, just please have to okay. learn. No way. Fast speak, man. <laughs> well, the question uh, maybe I'll read your game. Yeah, got it. He's got it. All right, let's do it again. I was gonna say. Gonna um, I believe there there is some truth to it. There is some truth to it. There is some truth to it. Um, with um, not truth in its con. Like there's one concept that I agree with, and that's um, mm -hmm. the power of the mind. But, um, and the only reason I agree with the concept of like the, the mind having power is um, because of repentance and how repentance works. Because repentance is about um, a change of mind, um, a change of mind, and that in itself with other things leads to a change mm -hmm. of life. And, um, and so I, I agree with that concept, but even then it's not just the change of mind alone that works, but also the spirit of God working and also other things like faith and obedience that, um, yeah. work with repentance to, you know, transform your life. So, um, so I can see, I can see the angle that they're coming at. The Bible does. And also, um, there's a, you see, this is, this is where like Christians like yeah. can sometimes, bro, fam, this is how, cause yesterday I was talking about this as well, fam. Yeah. I was talking about everything yesterday, man. Yeah. Honestly. And it wasn't even in the context of faith, but it was a similar thing. We're talking about how um, verses in the Bible can be misunderstood to support things like, for example, the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, the Bible does say in, I think, James, it talks about how the tongue is powerful and it's like, a, it's like the rudder for a ship. So, like, when you have verses like that and you have people coming up with ideas and, you know, um, concepts like law of attraction, um, it's very easy for a Christian to fall into that thinking, oh, okay, cool, but, you know, James, whatever verse says, um, my tongue has power, so maybe I can manifest this power, use this power to, to my own needs, my own advantage. Yeah. 
I like it happens a lot. Like I didn't realize it happened as like I didn't realize that it was such a big thing in Christianity until like my friends were telling me about their friends and people were telling me about how they use it all the time as a Christian for healing and stuff. And and it rattled me because like yeah. As a, I never really, I never knew of this thing that existed in it, but I knew of the verse, and I never had that understanding of the verse. So it's very important that, like, when we read a verse or whatever, like, 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 as, like we were talking about today, that that we have faith in it, because yeah. when we have faith, then we know that the the spirit speaks to us in it, and the spirit give us a proper revelation of the verse, and not of a gazy one that you know we just just mm-hmm. use for our own advantage. But um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. But I do kind of agree with the idea about how. Um, a change of mind equals a change of being because you know the bible does the bible does say that there's a lot of people in the bible examples that they've changed their mind and their whole being was changed like for example paul like, the new testament is 75 percent written by paul like it's, it's literally his biography like, I'm not, not like, it, like to say. it's literally um uh is that he wrote what's it? i don't know but he wrote he wrote all of it like he wrote most of it but i don't know i can't remember i don't know which one the autobiography bible is bad i should know yeah, I don't know, like, but the thing is that his ch- his change of mind like transformed, transformed like what, um, the the first the first church and um, it kind of like his work was foundational in terms of the church growing, um, in the world. So yeah, you can see that change of mind is a, it has a very big effect. But like I said, it's not just the change of mind, but yeah. other things working with it, um, like the power of God and you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But yeah. You know, even with these things, yeah, mm-hmm. um, I don't really have uh, an answer to your question, Tommy, about whether or not I believe it. I, I think I've still got to work my head around it. But yeah. from, but with these things, yeah, I've deeped, and especially my own testimony of, like, coming to, to Christ and giving my life to Christ, like, nothing makes sense without Christ. Like, yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. And so... The thing is with us humans, we we want to make sense of things, right? When we don't understand something, it's frustrating. Or yeah. especially if you're trying to understand like how the world came to being or what your purpose oh, yeah. here on earth. If it's anything without Christ, you'll walk this earth really like lost. Um, yeah, absolutely. And actually, when you come to Christ and understand the purpose and the life that he is willing to give you and has died for, everything makes sense. Yeah. So I think... Even it reminded me of Romans actually, because um, in Romans one it says in mm-hmm. verse. So I'm gonna start from uh, verse twenty one. Romans one twenty one. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll see when I get to the verse. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and images and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves, because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So even with this, like the law of attraction, like, if you think about your mind, yeah, like God is the one that's actually created our mind and given us this mind. Just yeah, amazing yeah, yeah. Mind. That's a good point, Sharon. Like here, yeah. people are not even worshipping the creator. They're worshipping the created thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we know from Genesis 3, when we fell, all of this has fallen. So even our minds, um, they're, they're wicked, you know? I mean, yeah. even in, if you look back in... Uh, in the Old Testament, because they didn't, they apparently they didn't have a, they didn't have an, a word for the brain. So they believed that everything um, flowed out of the heart. So your choices, your decisions, everything came out of the heart, right? Mm-hmm. So your mind was technically in your heart. Um, and even Jeremiah says, like, the heart is desperately sick. Like, who can, who can heal it? So if you think, like, even when it comes back to faith, our faith is not just an exercise of our mind, like it's a reality in our heart. Yeah. And so with this, believing that the words that you speak and the things, the thoughts in your mind or the way that you think about things will change stuff. I don't know. It just seems a bit like it's not even constant, our, our minds and our beings, you know? 
Sure. The thing is, right, like there was this guy who was talking about this, um, especially with the people that says, you know, that believe, oh, the universe, I believe in the universe, the universe will do this. Da, da, da. It's like saying, like your father gives you a gift, right? And then you love the gift so much that instead of praising your daddy, you, you, you pray, you're like praising the gift instead of praising the one who gave you the gift, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so, but like moving on, um, you know, how, how would you compare somebody who walks in faith? So not in this uh, law of attraction faith, but in this in faith in God, right? <laughs> before, we, before we confuse ourselves, let's make sure it's all clear. Uh, like, so, you know, I don't know if you can see people like Ab Abraham or even you in your life, right? Um, how would you compare somebody who walks in faith versus somebody who just, who doesn't, who, who just, yeah, I believe in the Bible, but yeah, I, I don't have faith in the way I walk. Right, in everything that I do. And we can probably start with Abby because she's been quiet for a while. Um, they, they walk in confidence. Mm -hmm. they, they have strength. They have hope. It's like, even now, because of Corona, you can mm -hmm. tell like how many um, non-Christian people have been like so anxious. They have been locked down at home. They don't know what to do. They are so afraid to die. But once you have God and once you have the faith, you live into yeah. it. You just you just let like everything into him. You don't worry. Because it says like um hello mm -hmm. like uh, the one who looks after you never sleeps, like he never he never leaves you, he's always there. Mm -hmm. So you by knowing this verse, you just apply it to your life and you have peace when you sleep, when you whatever you do. Amen. Mm -hmm. Even Psalm twenty three, Psalm twenty one. And I mean, 91 are those verses that I have heard so many times now, now that during the corona. And it's our strength. It's something that is like our medicine when, when we're sick. We just take it and then the faith applies it. If you need to be calm, it, it makes you calm. If, you ha if, it has, if it has to be applied as a painkiller, it gets, <laughs> it gets a painkiller or like a GPS, anything. So... I think it's just something that we have in our faith, in, in our life that helps us to to live in everything. Yes, we do. exactly. Especially acting on it, right? Um, yeah. Now, do you have anything to say? Um, I guess. Oh wait, sorry. Can you give me a second? No worries. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, bouncing off from what Abby's saying, um, it's right it's like the faith you, like the peace you can even have by just letting go trusting in a god that you know and just obeying in him like because we as humans want to take as much control as we can like we were saying before um just you know take control oh okay i want to be in control i want to make sure it's the way i've done i want to plan everything make sure everything happens straight da, da, da. but let it go to god like it might you might you just feel so relaxed even when things are just going so mad because you know your uh, protector is always there for you but mm. back to you now yeah no fam fam this is this is so weird sometimes because again believe you or not but about it yesterday <laughs> um, I was thinking about, um i don't know proverbs 16 it was, that was our chapter for the bible study in it yeah and um for I was speaking about this as well I was speaking about um peace of mind but we we're talking about um peace of mind god gives and that like, when we bring it into this like faith gives you a lot of peace of mind and mm -hmm. how faith like peace of mind isn't like peace of mind is very underrated like it's not something that it's something that everyone wants and something that you know it's not like if i lose it i'm not gonna like realize oh i just lost it but i'm going to know like my whole life will feel different if i don't have peace of mind mm -hmm. you know faith faith again that like, it's making something so intangible tangible like people people can't really think about how it feel like to never stress about anything. But, you know, faith does that for you. know, it, it gives you that, like, you know, Christ, it says, um, I think it says, where the spirit is, there's peace, righteousness, and joy. I think that's what the verse says. And like, faith is what, you know, helps you um, achieve that peace of mind, like to know that it's there and to have it accessible to you. And yeah. I feel like this kind of like goes into another point where like faith is more than just believing. Um, faith has that like, two aspects it has the believing part but that comes hand in hand with the receiving part like i don't think that if if like the shorts like definition i give of faith is believing and receiving because like when i believe in something it's all well and good but with faith i receive from it 
So for example, if I, so for example, um, Hebrews, um, it talks about a lot of people. Um, let me see, let me see if I can get a good example out of this one. So, um, yeah, the whole of faith, the whole of faith. So, okay, cool. So, Noah, no. like his faith, he the reason he had faith is because he believed what God told him. He, he, he genuinely believed that there was going to be a flood that's going to destroy the world, and because of that, he, he acted on that and he received like salvation that like he was saved from all of that his family was saved from it like his family didn't even need to believe that like, this is how great his faith was yeah, this yeah, is yeah. how wonderful faith is like Noah's family didn't even need to believe that Noah was doing the right thing yet they still participated in that um salvation so mm-hmm. if you ask me like for a crazy story of grace that would be my story of grace like Noah's family didn't even need to believe in Noah telling the truth but they were just saved because of his because of his faith they, they, yeah. it was that grace of God that got them but you can see that with faith you like you there's a clear part where you believed and then there's a part that comes right afterwards where you receive from that belief mm. and I feel like that that the that's what makes faith make that's what that's how intangible things become like real mm. and so real to us because we we move on from just believing to receiving so I believe in peace but now I've received it I know that it's tangible even though it seems intangible and um, that's 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 a very that's that something that just came into my mind now. Still, when we're talking about um, just jumping off what your point was. Yeah. Still, but when you think of it, like like imagine this guy, you know, out of the street, just building a huge ship, and you know everything seemed fine and everything, and he just like I'm sh- I wonder what the people were thinking about Noah when he was just making that ship like they must have been perplexed like is this for 120 thing? years he <laughs> built an ark on dry land Bro, he's not normal you know so what I mean? if, I that, if i saw someone do that in hackney that's it i'm calling <laughs> no, you have to understand <laughs> you have to understand yeah like there must have been a point where the like the only reason he was actually living was to build the ark because 120 years is a long like the, the last time i know the last time back then was, really high, like, was in the hundreds <laughs> Uh-huh. They had a long. They would live up to like yeah, seven hundred no. years. Yeah, yeah no, long. but cool, cool. But like, like when you think about it, like one hundred twenty years is like is a lifelong mission. Yeah. Like we're talking about a dedication. Like I don't know. For me, <laughs> I'll build this site for one hundred twenty years. Uh, there'll be a point where like nothing else really matters but finishing what I started because I'll just feel sick if I die before I finish what I started. Yeah. Like can you imagine one hundred twenty years? And like, bro. <laughs> But it paid off at the end. It was worth it, man. It was so worth it. Hundred percent, was worth it. But yeah. Abby, you turned on your mic. I guess you have something to say, and then we'll get back to you, Sharon. I didn't forget, but yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so crazy. Like um, you know, when you fully work in faith, you might look crazy mm-hmm. to others, but then it it just means that God is actually taking you to someone to a place that you have never experienced. You know, because you're being obedient to Him, as we were mentioning before. And yeah. once you obey God, it takes you bigger things. Yeah. So yeah, even even Abraham by by his time he was crazy by just leaving the house just like that, you know. And uh, <laughs> no, again, uh, different people. Even David uh, when he was just going to kill the, the Goliath, and the physical structure is so different, but he still had faith. He still believed in his God. Mm-hmm. So if we look in the Bible faith has put them into doing like crazy things crazy things but the people who do not understand what faith is if you get what i mean uh, like it's crazy by normal people but yeah. it's not crazy if you really are into it if you know that that your god actually is able to do that it's not crazy and that's what that's why they didn't care about what they're doing yeah yeah <laughs> for them it's just like a normal it's like so obvious yeah exactly yeah. Uh, it's like it's like nowadays us being christian and non-christian like how can you believe because every time i talk about christ yeah people you be, people will be like how can a virgin even give birth you know and this is and this <laughs> like, is like hold up, me pause, pause, pause. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly and this is like us being no you know yeah if i'm 21 years i have been believing in this for 21 years mm-hmm. and it's just crazy for them yeah, but I think each year there is a, a craziness that uh, we Christians bring because of our faith. Mm-hmm. But them, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that's such a cool point. 
but like also you know you sometimes also can have uh faith but you just you're not 100 percent sure right um like you say oh you know i'll just risk it i'll just go all in you're like you cannot always be like especially with action i mean when it comes to salvation i would put it in a different category uh mm-hmm. but sometimes you just like you just jump into it and say you know god knows i don't understand how it's going uh mm-hmm. i think sharon sharon has a good testimony on this one right yeah, um, yeah, you do. remember <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> before i go on to that i would just want to read okay, something okay. in romans 4 about um uh Abraham and being justified by faith. So it says in Romans 4, 20 to 22, I'm reading from ESV. It says, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith and he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. This is why his faith faith was counted to him as righteousness. Um, And Pastor Isaac was telling us that the Greek word for faith um, mm. translated uh, not just to persuade, but to fully convict, to be fully convinced or fully convicted. Yeah. So it wasn't even, I think it was the same for Noah as well, but to be, they were at a point where they were fully convinced that the God, um, the God who revealed himself to them was who he said he was and he was capable of doing what he said he would do. Mm. Um, so yeah, but in terms of my testimony, <laughs> wait, repeat your question because it completely went out of my no, mind. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to create some kind of flow to connect the ideas. Okay, okay. sorry. <laughs> you, didn't have, you just wanted me to... <laughs> no, I do, I do, I do. No, I do. no, no, no. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, just, just tell us your testimony. I think it just fits in perfectly with what we're talking about. Yeah, you no, know, definitely. how you can conquer the obstacles in your head through faith and you just believe and just jump over them, right? Yeah. Um, and also, it, um, with the testimony as well, it kind of touches on opportunity, yeah. um, which we can also discuss. But basically, on the Friday of um, the conference, on the Friday evening... Um, we had a little debrief after the conference, all the leaders and people who helped to organize. We were just talking about the Saturday and Sunday and, you know, how it went, you know, as you do. And Gurmai must have said, our youth leader said to us, well, he said to me specific, specifically, um, what are you going to be singing on Saturday? Because we didn't lead worship Friday. So I was like, oh, I'm going to sing. He was like, oh, that's great. That's great. But it would be really amazing, you know, <laughs> you wrote a song to do with what we were learning about the theme of the con- conference, which was faith. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to pause there. But during quarantine and the majority of my life, yeah. I've been songwriting, writing poems, been doing, I've been preparing for this. But especially <laughs> during quarantine. Um, yeah. I don't know why, but I found a new sort of um, desire to want to write songs. And I didn't tell anybody, promise I did not say anything to anybody. <laughs> just in my room, I started um, playing my guitar, just bare, like just writing bare, mm-hmm. just in the spirit, just singing bare songs, doing whatever. I didn't mention it to anybody. And I just thought, you know, it's cool. I'm just doing it in quarantine because, you know, you're in your house. What else can you do? Um, and one also one key thing that Pastor Isaac said um, on Friday was that opportunity isn't always available. So when God says do something or wants you to move or calls you to do something and you know, right, because he does yeah. make us very aware of it, um, that we should go because opportunity isn't always available. Um, mm. and you may miss that for life. Mm. Um, so, yeah, when Grandma said that, immediately two voices in my head, quite literally audible. Um, and one of them was telling me, don't even think about it. You can't do this. It's not, it's not going to happen. You, you can't even sing. You can't do the madness. Mm. Mm. There was another voice simply just said, trust me. I, I know what I'm doing. I've got you. So in that moment, before Grimma had even finished his sentence, I was like, yes, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> then I thought about, and then after it was simple, I was just like, oh my God, what did I agree to? Crazy. Um, and I was making my way to Morale's house. But during the whole journey, I was just thinking, like, Sharon, like, 
God already, like even with my whole testimony of university, God has already showed me what he can do with the tiniest bit of faith. Mm -hmm. So I know that he is, he's a man of his word, that he's not going to go back on this. And um, in terms of songwriting, uh, Guru Mai prayed for me a couple of years ago and it was revealed to him. Again, I didn't say anything to him and God revealed that to him. So in that moment, I just mm -hmm. trusted the voice of the Lord and I moved and I spent that whole night writing um, two songs, which were just flowing out of my heart um, with the help of Morale and Carmel. But even like afterwards, I remember finishing the songs at like 5 a.m. And I was just sitting there thinking, this is crazy. Because first of all, I know all that it took was the faith that I had in God. Mm -hmm. And second of all, he did everything. I mean, even reminds me of 2 Corinthians 3, like it says, um, though we are not qualified, God has given us qualification to be ministers of his new covenant. Like I in myself, am not worthy to do anything, but he has allowed me to, so that I can minister to his people. Um, and then, yeah, I, I just went on Saturday and I was like, hey guys, <laughs> got some new songs. It's scary because I've never sung a, a song I've written to anybody. And just so many people for weeks, people were messaging me saying they were so blessed. And I was thinking, <laughs> uh, what like it's so crazy but actually step in faith and this is the season that i'm in stepping out in faith that's what we're calling it right. but stepping out of faith and and not it not just being uh something that you know so i know that god is able i know that he um is there when we call for him and he helps us in our times of need but actually move him with that and being like okay god because i know you are like this i'm gonna do this in faith it's pleasing to him, uh, Hebrews eleven six. That pleases him that we have faith. Mm -hmm. So God is able to move, man, mightily. Hundred percent. Yeah. Like I remember. Oh, Abby, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know. No. Um. Just to say that, uh, I remember her song was. I remember that Friday night. Grandma said, "Oh, you have to sing." She was like, "We were all exhausted, yeah, because we were sitting in the chair for long hours." She was like, "What? I want to sleep." She was like that. And then the next morning she comes back and she's like, oh, I have a song. I was like, oh. <laughs> so just amazing. But uh, talking about songs, like, I think the conference has been like open, something that opened our doors, like spiritual oh, eyes, because I don't know if you told me, you remember, I have been saying like, oh, I received a song, oh, I have been worshiping during the night and yeah, everything. Yeah. So I think for some somehow i don't know comes like i can't even say because of this mm -hmm. but it just opened everything like it's it, it goes it goes to a point to be easier to write songs and just really you know to sit down and write or even like to sleep and dream like a new song or something like that mm -hmm. and and it, it's not only me you know that from other youth i have heard like about singing a lot of people so i think like this conference has opened the door for a lot of singers to write their own songs to be yeah, honest okay. Not. Yeah. but like you know i think we'll talk more about that uh, in just a bit uh, i'm just checking the time so we don't overrun um but like i remember you know i was in the um, the pass it on conference uh the one with the pastor dawit right no dawit right is it yeah, 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 yeah. from America? Yeah, yeah I remember when my she... favorite one, the fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, pass it on the... from the states. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember when Sharon uh, was singing it there, and like, like you know, the amount of people that were like, "Oh my God," you know. Um, and if she hadn't stepped out in faith, right? Like the amount of things that wouldn't have happened, right? Mm. Um, and the fact that she conquered, you know, her fear through faith. You know, just like Abraham, you know, like Sarah conquered the fact that she was past her age to conceive by faith, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's the same thing, you know, everybody here listening, like, you can conquer things through faith, but your faith in God, like, you can be this mighty warrior of God that can trample over anything, any fence in front of him through your faith. Like, you can, the, the amount of things like God can make you jump through just because you believe in him are just crazy. Like when I think of it, like, uh, um, I mean, there's so many, like, you know, the Swedish missionaries that came to Eritrea that brought the gospel, you know, they were ready to die before they left. They were like, bye-bye, let's meet in heaven. And they were just gone. The amount of atrocities they went through just to bring the gospel in Eritrea and so many other missionaries. I remember another one, I don't know how true it is, but 
So he was supposed to minister to the Maasai in uh, Kenya. And he was praying and, you know, God tell, told him to just go because if he just went, these people would kill him like straight off. And yeah. so he went and then I think there was another guy with him and they were driving on a red car and they're just going, the translator, there's a translator with him in the car and they're just going to this place, you know, where there's the Maasai. And then they first, they come running to them. And then um, when he steps out of the car, everybody just stops. And then they just, you know, they, they come down on their knees and you see the, the amazing thing that happened was that day like a shining light was revealed to them and told them that a red car will come and this guy wearing this and that and that will come to you and you know he will tell you the truth something yeah. like that right i i don't know i, I haven't read it personally I, ha I heard somebody tell me that so i can't yeah. confirm it but you know if they hadn't done that and just walked out in faith the amount of things people would have been missing out on same thing you know with sharing songs and stuff um but I feel like I've talked a bit too much. You want to say anything now before we move on? Um, nah, you man, just yeah, you man, that's amazing still. Faith is faith is nice. Yeah. I think Abby, you were saying something. <laughs> uh, while you were while you were saying this, it reminded yeah. me about uh, we were like when we got out from Eritrea and before we got to Sudan to like the capital uh, my mom and everyone they have paid a lot of things uh, so the money was done this guy was meant to take us to Khartoum like to the capital yeah. but he just left us in in the middle of the road and it was me my brother and I was seven years old my brother yeah. was four and my mom and it's all dark we don't speak Arabic we don't need nothing mom mom was meant to have hijab uh, and everything like she has to look like Muslim and we were just left there mm -hmm. but it always amazes me how God is amazing so what we did was like we would just let us hold our hands together and like our luggage and my brother had pneumonia so he's not he's not even meant to be out in that cold mm -hmm. and mom was like okay you know what let's pray and we just hold our hands as soon as we said amen yeah a car stepped out and the guy was like let's come in and every time I think about faith, okay. this is just amazing about like, God will never, never leave us. If we just Amen. have faith into him, he will always be there. Because at that moment, nobody, if someone that you have paid has left you there, there is no <laughs> way that someone that you haven't paid can take you. Mm. Like literally no way. He took us wow. and he gave us some stuff. He put us there. He took us all the way to home like where we were meant to go and so i have seen like when it's about faith i have seen a lot of things like long stories as well but god is amazing oh, and he does i mean work. this is the god we serve i mean when it is deeper right like whoa <laughs> no, it is, yeah mm -hmm. i bro so many times yeah i don't know what it is about god and cars here but <laughs> man, there's so many well, stories well, i can tell you about people i know like for example like the most recent one i know like I think it was on a it was on a church retreat, uh -huh. and we're driving on the M way, the um, motorway, and um, what you call it? My uncle's um car it kind of broke down, and Gilmar got out, and I like, and I'm thinking, oh, this guy's probably gonna screw some wires or screw some caps. So I don't know, fix the car or something. And my mom just put his hand on the boot of the car and started praying for it, and then the car started working again. And I was like, but this, is, this is <laughs> and I was like. And this guy just comes into the car like he didn't do anything special. And I was like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. and, we just, mm -hmm. and then there's so many, there's even that time when um, when one of our one of our brothers, like, um, he must have he must have got out of this place here and like he had no idea like how to get to his destination. And the car just was just there and the guy just told him, get into the car. And then like he didn't speak to him at all and he dropped him off where he needed to go and the guy didn't even tell him where he wanted to go. And like when I hear stories like this year. Like, I don't know, it's something about God and cars, but fam, faith, God, cars, it's a wonderful story, man. It's a, it's a great ending to it. And uh, that's amazing. So, faith is powerful, man. Honestly. But, yeah. It's just, you know, uh, wow. Um, Go ahead, so Go ahead. Another one that happened is that. You're going to stay um, the whole night, man. This is so cool. Other way, I love it. Just, I love it. Is there enough home with a car, fam? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, it's so amazing how. Specific, like mostly me and my little brother 
uh, mm. the one that we came through live and everything it's so amazing the how we are alive because as i mentioned before he has pneumonia he had pneumonia and he got healed in sahara like in the cold place which is impossible <laughs> but he got what, healed what? there because he we got lost he huh? got healed of his like, pneumonia in the sahara desert yeah he got healed yeah you yeah. know like in the desert it's hot in the morning and super yeah very cold in the evening yeah, yeah. and if you know that pneumonia the, those people are not meant to be in cold at all yeah, yeah. Uh, so while we were going his bag fell down yeah with all the medications all the medications and mom was so worried and it means that he without his medication he just he's just gonna die there's no way yeah so i remember again praying for him and then he slept one day and he was awake and we were like, wow, he's alive. Again, he did the same thing. And we were in Sahara like for 18 days and he survived 18 days. We were like, yeah, what? Ah. as soon as we get to Libya, we're gonna, he needs to have a checkup or something. Yeah. But then we even forgot that he was sick. <laughs> and then long time, <laughs> seriously, long time, when we came to uh, Italy, there was a prophet and he was like, oh, do you remember how much God loves you? He even, he even took it up from that. You were meant to die on this day. But he saw the way that you were just praying because he heard, he heard mom mm-hmm. saying, oh, he's going to pass away today and everything. And I remember me and him just holding our hands again. This holding hands was more, a lot of things. <laughs> we were just holding our hands again. And uh, then, yeah. and then. Yeah, we just did like a short prayer. And that's why I love God, you know. You don't have like to to pray for hours. As long as it's like from your heart, yeah. he listens even to that short prayer yeah. that you do and he heals you. Mm-hmm. Uh, one other thing was, this one is really known. Infomachino is the, big, is the biggest airport in Italy. Mm. Uh, as soon as we went out from the airport, we were, yeah, we were there for my aunt. She was with us in Italy and then she has to go to London. Mm. So as soon as we drop her, my dad was driving like mm-hmm. 20 or 30 uh, kilometers per hour, okay? Yeah. And this car in the middle of the nothing, it starts to fly in the air and go around. <laughs> like, seriously, if you still go there, you can still see the place where we were, where we crashed because yeah. they can't fix it. And then it just go in the highway. No, it's not even highway, in the way to get into highway and it was just flying in the air. Mm-hmm. And if you see like down, if you fall down, like you die, you can't, they can't even find your body anymore. If I tell you like how we stay like one hand, like if anyone pushes the car, we yeah. will be dead. Yeah. So it's so amazing how the car, and I remember mom saying, Jesus, she just called his name once. She didn't even have the chance to call his name again. Mm-hmm. And the faith that we had, they oh were like, God. We were, we were not meant to move because if we move, mm-hmm. the car is going to fall down. So we're like, okay, God, we believe that you brought us here because of this. So, um, guys, just move the other one because. No, no, no. You know, like, man. Eight, nice. And then another car at the same time where we no, just. Car, we I, just I, I told you car, guys. The same, <laughs> the baby. Did it's the same hard, thing. Man. And we can't move. Yeah. The fact that we can can't move another car did that on us were just amazing like sometimes i feel like oh i'm dead i'm just living or i'm just reading a book that it was written about me because it's so um, every time we go to italy and we pass through that way we literally stop and praise god every time because it's our second chance of be, of being alive yeah, I wanna go and here. the thing is uh-huh. when we went out here yeah, <laughs> and the ambulance came nothing well, I had to, like nothing at all. We had no pain. We had nothing, and that's impossible. They were like, "Were you the one in the car, or was, was someone else in the car who already is going to the to, to the hospital?" Uh, it always reminds me the the story in the Bible about Daniel and his friends. To be honest, mm. you know, when oh, they the were fire. like in the fire, yeah. but the fire didn't even touch them at all. Mm. And instead of that, they could actually see like four people and not three anymore. Mm. Yeah, wow. yeah. God is amazing. Oh, and faith can bring a lot. Bro, wow. holding hands and cars, man. What is <laughs> <laughs> it? It's not even. Wow. Oh my word. Well, you see, the thing is, I just, I don't know if it's just me, you just want to sit, fall down and just praise God, you know, from inside yeah, of your heart. Like, 
this is our God, you know, if you guys don't know it, you know, for those watching, if you don't know this God, I mean, like, this is the mighty father that, you know, you put your faith in. This is the mighty father that is always there in the worst situation. And it's not you who defines what the bad situation is. He knows what the worst is and he knows how to take care of you. This is why, I mean, this is life as a Christian, bro. Like, you hold hands and you pray, you know what I mean? But it's not for what you want, it's for what he wants, right? It's just living that sacrifice, that sacrificial life uh, in faith for this. <laughs> wow, this magnificent God. But I feel like we have to jump a whole section because this is just... Uh, do you guys have any other things to say? Do you, do you guys, I'll, I'll give you this chance like, to pour out all your testimonies for those you know, listening and for whoever, you know, whoever one is new. If you guys have anything else to say. Like, no, yeah. Um, because my testimony links to the next part, I'll just say mine now and then we can uh, transition. We just transition into that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so yeah, man, um, yeah, I've been Christian for a while. I was brought up in a Christian house, um, you know, did the Christian things, you know, church, pray, all that stuff. Yeah. But um, one moment, uh, one period of my life where, like, I was so rattled, like, it was, I think, one of the, I was with one of the brothers and um, they were praying and they were praying, um, it, was, it was deliverance, right? And I was so baffed. I honestly, like, I watch a lot of TV shows, anime, so I see this kind of stuff and I'm thinking, like, this is a joke, like, it's not, like, <laughs> like someone must have been like, I don't know, someone's doing something, are they joking, like, what is it? I was so confused, like, I just couldn't believe it in my eyes. And then, like, and like, I was just so, like, I, I honestly didn't know, like, what was going on. But I just thought to myself, like, just god like just don't let it be me like i just i don't want to go out like that like let me just let me not do that deliverance thing you know what i mean so i was i was so confused but um then when a brother finished praying for the um for the guy um i can't remember was it girl or guy but he finished praying for them and um he just told us to like read our word and to to study our word and to get closer to christ and i, I think to myself like of all the things you could tell us that's what you decided to tell us like you didn't even try to break it like I'm thinking, like I need an explanation. Like I'm seeing, I'm seeing um, madness. Like this is the kind of stuff I see on like um, yeah. Emmanuel TV or um, <laughs> like you know the YouTube videos like um, yeah. um, Pastor delivers a woman with 125 demons. And, I, and I'm, this is the kind of stuff I see on TV. So when I see on TV, I'm very skeptical. So when I saw it in front of my eyes, I thought to myself like, now I can't be skeptical, but I have to figure out what's going on. Like this is a wreck. I, I was, I, it wasn't sitting right with me yeah so he was like just and i was so rattled because the advice he gave us at the end just made no sense to me like why are you telling me to like read my word like i, I want to know what happened like, i don't want to read my words sort or of thing. like tell me what happened and then i just thought to myself you know what if he could do that kind of stuff with that kind of power maybe he's right for me to read my word so i thought let me just read my word you know so i started reading my word bears and i like it wasn't like just reading it like how I used to, like when I was younger, I used to read the Bible, but I was very like, I, I was an ambitious kid in it. So like, I didn't want to read it for the sake of like knowing God, but for the sake of saying, cool, I read the Bible now, like I basically conquered it sort of thing like it's under my belt. So if people ask me for my accolades, I can be like, yeah, man, I've read the Bible, I've read the Quran, I've read that. So I, I, that's the kind of guy I was, I just wanted to know that I did, you know what I'm saying? I can say to myself that like, I did it. So I never really knew the Bible, but I knew the Bible. So I knew I knew the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, but I never knew the power of the Bible. Yeah. So now I'm reading it, it's like a whole different book to me again. And I read it and I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, I remember reading this like when I was at like, 10, but it just doesn't feel the same anymore. It's so different. Mm-hmm. And I'm reading it and I'm reading it. And then like I was seeing the importance of um having a relationship with God and like it's more than just like it's more than just god and man but it's father and child and it's um mm-hmm. savior and savee and it's like it's it was so more it was much more than what i thought it was and i was thinking to myself like bro like this is this is crazy and then there was and then i reached a bit where jesus was praying and you know, jesus delivered a kid and all the demons they went into the pigs and the pigs drowned and i was thinking to myself like bro like this demon thing isn't isn't <laughs> I thought, this, I thought this demon thing was like a like a jokey thing. I didn't think it was a serious thing like this. I thought it was like, oh, this is very rare. But then I realized that with the ministry of Christ, like 
deliverance was a must. Like, I don't think there was a place or a time where, like, he didn't go through a deliverance. Like, as soon as he finished teaching, it was straight deliverance. Like, and I didn't realise, like, I didn't realise how foundational it was. And I was thinking to myself, like, what about me? Do I need to be delivered? Does yeah. my parents need to be delivered? Like, do you need to be delivered? And I was very confused and I was thinking, nah, like, I need to find answers. So I thought to myself, let me just pray. Let me pray. Like, all this knowledge I have now, reading the Bible, maybe this prayer thing, it will yield, yield more results. So I thought, let me pray. So I started praying now and I'm thinking, like, God, like, now what is this? Like, what's, what's going on? Like, I don't, I don't understand, but I want to understand. I believe that it's, it's true and stuff, but I want to know more in it. I want to know more of you. I want to know more of what it is that you do. I want to know why Christ did this. I want to know this. I want to know that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, a few, a few, I think it was, what, a few months later, after all of this trying, um, I kind of, like, I wasn't phased by it anymore. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't like, I, I'll see people get delivered and I'll be like, oh, praise God, like, you know, that's another, that's another win. And like, it was, it, it I was so, it wasn't, I don't want to say I was desensitized to it because it's not something to be desensitized to, but I was very, um, I was knowledgeable about it now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't, I wasn't ignorant anymore. Like, I knew what it was. I knew how it worked. I knew the power that God had. And like, it was something that, like what was it um ephesians 6 like it's it's our battle you know what i'm saying yeah. Whoa, did i get it right it's ephesians 6 yeah it's our mm -hmm. it's our battle isn't it um <coughs> so i wasn't phased by it and then um uh i want to remember the date but i can't but um yeah wow. then then um then like i was what um what, oh, bro, i was so bad with dates i was so yeah then i was like I think I was, um, it was a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like, I was in a Bible study and then like, um, people were like, people were like, um, you know, praying and talking and talking and praying. And then all of a sudden, I must have. <laughs> we'll cut this out, we'll edit this, we'll edit this out. Left. <laughs> Oh, you, 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 well, guys, give me a oh, <laughs> Dartford connection. That's the same. Oh, he's back. Oh, no, so, I just saw this video thing in front of me. Like, hear me out. So, basically, so yeah, we we're just praying, everyone's praying, and then, like, man, just felt a bit unsettled. I was uneasy. I was a bit, I was just rocking in my seat. Like, I just wanted to go home. Like, I wasn't feeling comfortable. And, um, and then at the time, I was thinking, like, bro, man, man needs to go home. Like, I want to go home now. I have to go home. I'm tired of this. I want to go home. And I've never, like, I'm a homebody, innit? Like, I like staying at home. Yeah. I like staying at home. But I've never, ever in my life, like, really wanted to go home this bad before. And, like, it didn't feel natural. Like, I just, bro, like, I just, it, it felt very weird. So I was, like, cool. Um, 10 o'clock, I'll just leave the house and I'll make my way to my house. So 10 o'clock comes now. I get up and I'm walking towards the door now. And I just feel very heavy. And I was, like, I thought, I just, yeah. I want to leave. I really want to leave. But I just physically can't move out of the, like, leave the door. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I just push myself through the door. And then, like, you have to go down these stairs to go out of the house, innit? But then I just couldn't. Like, I just went into the toilet and I just had to think for myself, like, for a moment, like, what the hell is going on? Like, I splashed water in my face. I'm trying to wake myself up. I was thinking, like, this is a bit gazy. I don't know what's going on. And then, like, I go back into the room now and I'm like, you know what? Let me ask, um, let me ask the, the people to pray for me, innit? Because, you know, this is a bit weird. And like, bear in mind, earlier, like, I would never have done that because I didn't know my word. I didn't know what faith was. I didn't know what was going on. Like, I wouldn't have asked people to pray for me. I would have just said, you know what? This is too weird for me. I'm going to conk out or sleep or just leave. Like, I don't know. Like, I just can't be involved. But I, I saw the difference in me, the change, like, how it developed. And so, the, so like, the guy prayed for me. And then I grew to be God, like I got delivered in that. And it was, it was a bit, it was, a, it, was a, it was crazy. I can't lie. It was actually... It was, yeah, it was it was very um what's the word? It was a bit, you know what's even funnier? There was a car story in this deliverance. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> so mid deliverance, okay, mid deliverance, like the the someone calls the police and like it's getting too loud and like the police are trying to see what's going on. Like, there's so much is going on and then so we decide to like um everyone needs to go home and like, because people are still like young at the time, like people mm -hmm. parents are worried and like they need to come home. It was quite late at night. So people that like, called would just send, we'll just do this at um, our youth leader's house, innit? 
So we're going to Girman's house. We're on the way to Girman's house now. And we're in a car here. And Girman's still, this guy's still praying for me in a car and delivering me. And I'm thinking to myself, like, and I'm just there, like, seeing all of this happen in front of me. And I'm thinking, like, bro, this is, is this what Jesus was on? Like, I was there. I was, I was like, I was enjoying it. I was happy. I was like, glory to God, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I was like, I was so happy. And I didn't, like, wow, that means so happy. I was so confused. But then, like, there was a big lorry. There was a fat lorry. I've never seen, like, a lorry like this. In my life. So, I just honestly know, like, these are the kind of lorries you see on the motorway just going through, yeah. like, from Birmingham to Manchester to London. You know what I'm saying? Like, but all of a sudden, it's, in, it's this a small road. It's at like, a junction. And then, like, bro, like, the demon was, like, looking at the lorry here. And I was thinking, like, Bro, we're gonna crash. Like, I just knew it. I was like, fam, I was like, this isn't correct. Like, I was like, no way. Like, that lorry is actually gonna wipe us off this earth. And I was like, no. And then, like, all of a sudden, yeah, like yeah. the driver, like, I don't know what happened yet, but I just think to myself, like, God, like, it can't go out like this. Like, not like this. And then, like, and this is happening in a split second in your head. Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't know, like, like, for me, yeah, I'm thinking, like, there's, like, it's almost like, I'm, the demon's thinking and I'm thinking and I'm seeing what the demon's thinking and I'm seeing what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like, bro, like, I'm just happy that God's doing his thing. And then like, a split second, I see the lorry here and he's not slowing down. He's not even, he's trying to turn in, but we're trying to go straight through the junction. He's trying to turn. So I'm thinking like, bro, like, he's not going to slow down. Like, it dawned on me like, this <laughs> gonna, like yeah. and then all of a sudden, yeah, I was like, no, God, it can't be like this. Not like this. And then, the driver, like, I don't know how, but, like, he must have just swerved out the way. And I don't know how he, like, I don't know how he, like, like, you, this isn't, like, a simple manoeuvre. Like, you must understand, yeah, there was centimetres between us and the lorry, like, yeah. and we're going full speed as well. Like, we're talking, like, we're talking, like, if, if we hit the lorry, there would be no us. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, was, it, was, it wasn't it was a yeah. joke, no. And, like, split second, like, he just, he, he's, Touch the lorry, and I'm thinking to myself, like, bro, like, what was that? And then, like, in the moment, I'm thinking, what was that? But, like, this is how I knew I progressed, like, how I knew I had faith because mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't worry about us not dying. Like, in that moment, like, I was like, bro, glory to God. And I'm thinking to myself, like, why am I praising God so much these days? Like, why am I? <laughs> and it kind of dawned on me, like, like at the end of deliverance, like, when everything was finished, when everything was said and done. Like, reading my word made a difference. Like, it made the difference that is incomparable. Like, the relationship that I made with God, like, my faith increased tenfold. Like, it wasn't the sort of thing where, like, I was believing anymore, but I was believing and receiving. Like, my faith, I believed, and I received my deliverance. And it wasn't, it wasn't like... It wasn't something that just came upon me one day, but it was something I grinded for. It was something that yeah. I, I, I put my head down and I said, cool, I need to read my word. I need to have an intimate relationship with God. Like I need to know him on different levels. I can't just know him as a God and man. Like, I need to know him as my father, my yeah, savior, yeah. my deliverer, my bro, my, my one, my best friend, my, my father. Every, I just need to know him on every level possible. And, when I strive for that, when I strive to have that kind of faith, when I strive to build my faith in that manner, my whole life changed. Like, I, like, like I got delivered. Like, in that moment, I got delivered. And like, my kind of my kind of story is, is kind of like is, is backwards and forwards. It's a bit is weird. But I got delivered like a couple times after that as well. And then like, eventually, like, like the devil, like he didn't give up, but he just knew that my faith wasn't going anytime soon. And like, since then, like. Devil hasn't been able to like get on my faith ever again like that. Like, I've honestly like I've I because of my faith I always feel like I'm two steps ahead of the devil. Like yeah, when I pray, like I know that um, everything could be fine. I could be having the best day of my life, the best season of my life. But I pray knowing that the devil's not gonna rest, and I pray ah, oh, praying as the devil's the, the devil's plans against me, my family, my people, everyone. Like I pray against it because I know like. The devil doesn't stop. Like, from my experience, I know he doesn't stop. And it's because of that faith that I know that these plans that the devil have, they, 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 don't, seem, they don't seem realistic. They don't seem real. But I know that they're real and that they, they will happen if I don't pray against it. That like it's my responsibility, you know what I'm saying? 
And I knew that's my responsibility because I've read the word. I've had a relationship with God now. My faith has been building up again and again. Like, honestly speaking, I didn't add to my faith. It was God. And it's, that's what I'm saying. Like, everything we get from God is a blessing. Like, our faith is a blessing. Like, to add to our faith isn't, isn't a chore. Or to add to our faith isn't a requirement that we ourselves have to look at and say it's an obligation that I do it. But it's more so that it's an obligation that we are obedient to God so that he can add to our faith. Only God knows how much to add to our faith and only God knows how much to test our faith. Yeah. And that obedience, that trust that you have to have in God, it doesn't come easy. I had to read the word and I had to read it for myself to edify myself, to edify my spirit, not just so that I feel like I've achieved the Bible, but that I feel like I've achieved the word of God, like the power of God. I, I, I have it in my life. And that change, like, I can, t- I can, it's like, two different nuts like it's just, it's just not the same i'm just not the same person anymore and honestly speaking i just never feel like i can ever be that person ever again because of what faith has done to me like i honestly feel like once you add to your faith yeah you never you can never go back like it's very hard to go back like i i, I would be so shocked to find someone that can add so much to their faith and find a way to go back because you you end up with a black hole inside you like you just end up with you feel like there's nothing to you if you don't have faith and that's how I feel like these days like there's if I don't have faith then I'm nothing like I'm honestly nothing like yeah. it's nothing matters if I don't have faith like if Christ didn't die on the cross for me if I didn't believe in that like what am I like what is this like everything is futile I, I think Paul says he said if if Christ sacrificed if Christ died on the cross for vain in vain then our faith is futile like it means nothing like and since then like since I've added to my faith I've never stopped wanting to add to my faith. Like, you have a hunger to add to your faith. And again, this hunger isn't because I wanted it, but because God gave it to me as a blessing. Like, as much as I wanted it, it was a blessing from God. And the biggest thing about faith and why we should discuss faith in general is, like, it helps you understand that everything, everything comes from God. Like, and no matter how hard you try for something, it's not because you tried hard enough, it's because God wanted it enough for you. And knowing that, it gives you a peace of mind because I know that Christ has laid out steps for me. I know there's a path that's waiting for me. So me, I don't need to wake up worrying about what I'm going to do tomorrow. I don't need to wake up. I don't need to go to sleep thinking to myself, oh, what am I going to do tomorrow? But I know and I trust in God. I have faith in God that the plans that seem intangible are very tangible now. They're very real to me. Like I can, like, and, the, and the blessings that I've received from this faith are endless. Man. Like the things that that like God opened my eyes to because of my faith. Like, bro, I feel like a superhero fan. Like, I feel like when I'm infused with the power of God, I just genuinely feel supernatural. Like, my whole being is supernatural. And that was the biggest revelation I got. Like, faith, what it does is it makes you, what you think a natural man, it makes you realise that your reality is spirit. And because your reality is spirit, you're not just a natural person, but you're a supernatural being. Like a spiritual being is a supernatural being. It's not like a human where we have limitations, but a spiritual being has no limitations. You know what I'm saying? Like I can pray for somebody in my house, but they can be in South Africa or they can be in Kenya and they can get the deliverance of prayer that is, that's needed for them because I prayed for my house because I realized I'm a spiritual being and, you know, prayer and all that kind of stuff. Like it, it's, it's, it's nature, it's, it's natural to me, sorry, it's, it's, it's my, it's my, um, it's a habit to me now, and bro, bro, building on your faith, yeah, it's just, it's a very, it's a very humbling experience, like I said, like, you, you realise that God is truly in control of everything, and everything is a blessing from God, and I feel like this revelation, it doesn't come light to people that aren't believers, because people that aren't believers, they're still stuck in original sin, they still feel like, they still feel like they need to be their own God. They feel independent of God. But once you realize that you're not independent of God, and you're not even interdependent on God, you're just wholly dependent on God. Once you realize that, you won't be worried about God's will for your life. You won't be worried about, oh, um, what do I want to do? Or you'll be more worried about what God wants you to do. And you'll be more focused on how God wants you to get to places. And you'll be more focused on doing what God wants you to do. And that transition, it's not a blink of an eye. That transition... It happens over time and all good things they last because they've happened over time and that's that's a great thing that i realized with like building my faith like through my testimony that you know god is actually in control of everything and like i feel like there's so much more i could say and there's so much more that can be said about faith because 
like like the word says, Christ is our the author and perfect of our faith. There is no end to our faith. You just Hello. so so where I am right now, I can have faith even greater than that. And where I am then, I can have faith even greater than that. And then even like bro, like when I look at Hebrews eleven, I see the whole of faith and I think to myself like these people did great. They did okay, but I want to be better. Like I want to be better for yeah. God. You know what I'm saying? And like that hunger is honestly a blessing because like I said, I'm an ambitious person, but I was never ambitious for God. I was ambitious for my own needs. But for God to change that ambition and make it for himself, yeah. like I've I've reaped rewards that I've never thought I'd reap. Like it's just honestly speaking, it's the greatest experience of my life. And it's, it's it's wonderful, fam. Like I can never forget. I can never go back. No turning back. That's how it is. But bro, like so you're jacking us up so much. I'm sure everyone listening is like, all right, what how do I get this? Like, where does this come from? Mm. Um, I think I want to give Sharon the opportunity to speak. Like, yeah, how no, you no, built no, this yeah. faith that you know now is you know testifying so much about, and he's like, <laughs> my life has been changed by this. How do you build it up? How do you build it up? I mean, that would kind of encompass everything. <laughs> I think people need to pause this, go back, <laughs> and listen to that again <laughs> and again and again. Um, but like Romans ten seventeen says, mm. hearing comes, um, faith faith comes from hearing, and hearing the word of Christ. I think the most important thing. Um, even when Naod was speaking, is that we don't just have faith. Yeah. We just, it's not just, oh, I have faith, but what is the object of your faith? And the object of our faith is God. And as he said in Hebrews 12, um, where it says, looking, uh, it says, verse one, therefore, since we are crowded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let's also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and lets yeah. us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Um, and so the object is, the object of our faith is God. It's not looking to ourselves or looking to this world, but in everything, looking to God. So come into the word of God humbly. Um, and obviously you need to come with faith, but you, you're not going to be able yeah. to receive what the word says um, if you're not looking at it from the lens of faith. But come into the word and reading the words and meditating on the words. And I, I'm going to highly emphasize meditating. I don't think that you can just read one verse and get it. And if you do, you know, praise be to God. That's amazing. <laughs> but just one, like definitely like a habit that I um, started to get myself into during quarantine was just um, meditating on a verse or a chapter for like two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. So every day I'd write it, I'd write it out. I'd memorize it and try to listen i did that with romans 8 first i don't know it's just been on my heart <laughs> and when i say just every day there was something new i was like wait what god's spirit is affirmed with us to say they were children uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and even um yes. even uh one of the songs that we wrote mm -hmm. uh yeah one of the songs that we wrote for the conference mm -hmm. um some of the lyrics were from Romans 8 but the thing is I didn't even realize because I'd been meditating it so much it was just flowing out of my heart yeah so yeah. we need to get to a point where um we are eating this uh, not mm. literally don't do the pages of the Bible, <laughs> like, the word. Like, yeah. every, the same way we depend on water and food like earthly things to sustain our bodies we need to depend on the word of God which is truth life spirit for our spirits and for our souls so yeah. that's what we need to do but then also pair that with prayer as well because prayer is so important um and like it says in james five sixteen, the prayer of a righteous person produces wonderful results so right. when we come on the basic like the basis of our faith is the righteousness of jesus christ so amazing um second corinthians five twenty one, like jesus mm -hmm. became sin that we could become the righteousness of god i don't even think i've deep that fully yet i'm not gonna lie but mm -hmm. The basis of, of our faith is the righteousness of Christ Jesus. And so when we come and we come with, through the blood of Jesus, God listens to us and sees yeah. us as clean before his eyes because of what his son has done for us. And so when we, when we pray and believe that God will do what he says he will do in his word, produces wonderful things. So that even coming to God and asking him like, God, I come to you as the source of my life and I need you to reveal these words because yeah. I desire you more than anything. He is so, so, so faithful to um, deliver you, to reveal to you these words, to make it so clear, like like how this wall is like clear to me, to make <laughs> these, wall, these words clear to you as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, never underestimate um, the word. 
because it's crazy deep like if i remember i was thinking to myself one day i was like oh i would just love to like see jesus right now and just have a conversation with him it'd, it'd be really amazing yeah. <laughs> and then i did you know the actual literal words of jesus the son of god yeah god himself <laughs> It, like they're, they're here in this word that we have them it's just crazy like the things that he spoke yeah. 2000 plus <laughs> years ago are with us i don't know i mean yeah, we, like, we just need god to open our eyes really to see the power of the word yeah. and the gospel but yeah hearing the word is very 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 yeah. crucial i mean you have anything to say because i have like a, a question just right after it um, no, no, I think they have said everything. Nice. So, like, right, um, like how much time you spend with the Word of God, right? That's the more you hear it, the more it just hits your heart. The more you live it, you know, the more you build up that faith. Um, also, like, back to now, it's testimony where he was like, you know, I wasn't so sure at the beginning, but then the more you, you know, you seek God and the more it builds up and builds up and builds up. Uh, but I'm sure the negative, the opposite can happen. Right, because how much time you spent? Like you have the word of God, but then you have the word of other things. Um, for example, you can spend your time just you know uh, hearing about you know false stuff or other things, um, and like uh, you know you can you can be hearing false teachers, right? Yeah. So how how do you think that like how does that relate to you know you build up your faith in a good way, but how can you destroy your faith? What things you should abstain from? To avoid this destruction of faith. Um, Abby, do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything? I just have something small to say, but Abby can go. Um, I remember. Uh, I like the way that uh, Pastor Isaac he had mentioned that the word that we hear comes to yeah. our heart. So, the word that we have in our heart is what we that comes when we listen like to fake prophets or anything like that yeah. the word of god so i think that's why we need to be deeply into the word of god to know it to have memorized verses and then that's going to help us you know to understand whatever we're listening that is against it i think Do you have anything to say sharon um like well, i mean look at your experience as well what you see on other people like other, I don't know, other churches, like other beliefs. Yeah, like, for example, what comes to mind to me is I grew up in Eritrea, so I see a lot of the Orthodox, you know, uh, tradition uh, being channeled into people, you know, and stuff like that. No one, think yeah. Um, I think one thing which is maybe easier to fall into is yeah. this idea of um, if I work for it, then, mm -hmm. like, the more that I do, the more that I'm merited um, by God, like the more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I read my Bible for three hours or pray for six hours every day, then God will love me more or that's not the case. <laughs> the reason, literally the basis is Jesus. The, everything, yeah. I mean, everything, it's because Jesus has done it. Hence why we can do all things. So um, whenever you do feel, do feel like you're slipping because recently um, quarantine was so beautiful. I know it's such, it was such a chaotic time yeah. for a lot of people, loads of people lost their family and loved ones. Um, but personally for me, like I remember praying before quarantine, a bit selfish of me, but I was like, God, I need time. I just need an abundance of time. And I don't know how you're going to do that. I don't know if you're going to add another day into the weekend for me, <laughs> but I just well, need okay. time because I just felt myself um, getting to a point where I was going to burn out like mm -hmm. I was just doing so much, mm -hmm. commuting to uni every day, just a lot, lot of stuff. And then lockdown happens. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, this is interesting. Got lo loads of time. <laughs> but I started thinking, so I started structuring my day, but I just, um, one thing that I do was just, before I did anything, just spend time fully with God. And mm -hmm. I didn't care how long it took. It was just, sometimes it was an hour, sometimes it was more. It was whatever I did, right? Yeah. Um, but lockdowns eased um, and I'm going back into the routine of like uni and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't have that time. And like a couple of days ago, I was thinking, oh my God, like, God, I'm so sorry that I haven't been spending time with you. And da, da, da. Then I realized that like, what's actually the motive behind that? Because am I thinking that God sees me as any less because I'm not doing what I did before? Really, yeah. truly, the seasons change. So, you know, but crisis constant. 
And so we can put our faith in the fact that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So Amen. that's that's what we mean by when we've even mentioned before that faith is not a work. So we do not work for faith, but our faith allows us to work. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, but even with like false teachers and prophets, uh, it reminded me of First John, two chapter two, verse twenty and twenty seven. So it says in verse twenty, "But you're not like that, for the holy holy one has given you his spirit, and all of you know the truth." And it goes to verse twenty seven. John mm-hmm. saying, "But you have received the Holy Spirit, and He lives within you, so you don't need anyone to teach you what is what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know." And what he teaches is true. Yes. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. So as long as we are remaining in fellowship with Christ and we are dependent on him as our source of life, mm-hmm. the promise of the Holy Spirit that he's given us that we have and that we've seen in our lives, he, the Holy Spirit will teach us. So if ever we listen to a sermon or someone speaking and we're like, mm, I don't, it sounds right, but there's something that I'm not, it's not settling right. Bring yes. it to God, present it to God and say, like holy spirit te- is this right like, teach me because we've actually got that access so beautiful um so yeah yeah you're so right about that uh, i think like the holy spirit is always there even like sometimes you just feel it inside of you even when you do something wrong yeah you just feel like oh i shouldn't be doing this yeah uh, so the holy spirit is always active there but sometimes when we are literally out of the way we lack to hear his voice even though he's actually still telling us and that's our our own issue but the holy spirit is always there god is always there to tell us what to do what to not do and uh, to always guide us but um it's good to have a time because if we see jesus yeah his lifestyle was he was with people all the day but during night he would feel himself by spending time with his father yeah mm. So yeah. it doesn't matter how in the Bible it doesn't say like how many how many hours he was praying. It just says he was praying. Yeah, yeah. And it, but it's so important that you feel it because the next day you need to be able to have it active, spiritually active, in order mm-hmm. to know what to listen, what to do, and where to go. You know, mm-hmm. to let the Holy Spirit lead you and not just go by the by, by yourselves or by yeah. your. So. Yeah, this corona has brought a lot of time with God and I'm so thankful. Yeah. And I was like, why not any bit more, you know, without people dying, but everyone yeah, no. <laughs> being locked down at home. <laughs> yeah. I mean. But as Sharon was saying, I also understood that what I need is to keep this fire, to keep this time that I'm having with God. You know, if I was reading every day, then to keep reading every day and not yeah. to go back to the lifestyle we had. 100%. And that's what I encourage most of the youth, you know, stay focused. And feel yourself every day. Amen. 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 Yeah. Like feel yourself every day in faith, right? Mm. Um, okay. I don't know. We got like 15 minutes, something like that. Um, Abby, I don't. I, I want to slot this in. Like, just you know, I I don't want to push it too much. But can you tell us like about the prayer group? So I know, like we've been having morning prayers. It's been pretty crazy. Um, Mm-hmm. and you know how when you have faith in God and you approach God um, and then you know you really want to you desire to keep that fire right to keep that desire in you um, mm-hmm. and we've been seeing you know like God bless us blessing us a lot um, do you want to like just just a bit just even a tiny bit I don't want to push you too much but it would be nice to you know so that people can have an idea what kind of God you know we serve yeah so one of the things that brought um so this, this group, prayer group, started after the conference was done. And we simply start, oh, you know what, well, that's our fellowship. And then so that we can meet everyone around the world. Mm. But, you know, the fire has started in the conference and people mm. couldn't just manage to be quiet. So we were like, you know what, well, let, us, let us start to pray just one day. It was meant to be on Monday, remember, the day after the conference. So we wake up in the morning and we were like five people, maybe even less than that. Yeah. I remember like calling my friends around the world and be like, hey, just jump out now. We'll be praying, you know, just waking up people from nowhere. And then that is so amazing because every time I think about this group, I, I used to tell them, like, I feel like a proud mom to see like <laughs> everyone so engaged, everyone doing different things. And, you know, like, because you know how we started. 
and you know where it is now. Yeah. Last time we just had a conference and it's like 18, 18K people. There is 18,000 like now. <laughs> yeah, and it's just crazy. And I'm like, uh -huh. uh, so this group is like, we are praying five, five days a week, five which is Monday, week. Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday and Saturday from 6 a.m. UK time. Uh, just one hour. Shameless but plug. Shameless, one... plug. <laughs> huh? Shameless plug. You know, they just put an ad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, but it's so amazing because we have seen things. Mm -hmm. Like, the main thing was we were just, oh, you know what, let's create this so our fire is always constant. But this fire went up to a point like uh, where we saw that God has answered our prayers, like three people, I think. They received their documents and everything, yeah. and we were praying them the day, the day we prayed is the day they got it, and some of them is the next day, and oh, it's so yeah. amazing, and we have we've seen a lot some of, of them. We saved some of the testimonies. Um, um, yeah. One of the testimonies was that there is a friend, a guy who is there, and he got a lot of family issues, so we were praying. I remember there was a day, but normally, yeah. We pray yeah. from six to seven, and who whoever wants to stay stays. Quarter past. And seven. I remember, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember it went crazy a day that we just prayed five hours, and oh, this was one of the days. This yeah. was one of the day where we prayed for this guy. Uh, so five hours plus the one hour that we prayed with everyone six hours just on your computer praying with those amazing people, and then we were praying for him not to only to have his paper because if he gets his paper. He has been in the country just for a few months, not even a year. So if he gets his paper, it's actually a miracle. And that is a way that the gospel could be preached in wherever he is, yeah. even to the family. So I was like, God, you need to do this. Because then everyone can be quiet. No, they yeah. can actually mm -hmm. believe that there is a God that works. So they can't. Um, they can't talk about your religion. They can't talk about, oh, why are you reading the Bible? Because your God works, you're still alive. And you're showing that by having yeah. the papers. So the day he got his paper, he, I remember he even telling us like how the family was just convinced about God. Oh, wow. You know, like wow. the, the, the heart that was so strong, like the Pharaoh's heart was actually broken in pieces. And believing in God, it was like people around, not even, not only his family, but even people around were like, this is a miracle because it's impossible that someone who just came got the paper, but someone who has been here for years still doesn't have it. <laughs> you look so, at this guy who has the papers after five months. Yeah. <laughs> and even his driving lessons at the same yeah. time. Oh, so man. things went, uh, I mean, God is so amazing. And this mm. conference has brought a lot of things to the youth. Uh, privately yeah. even as a group and i'm so thankful for the leaders that has organized it because it was like you know when sometimes you need someone that pushes you in order to jump yeah and that was and that this conference was just like a push yeah. to all the youth that was there in order to see what god has you know prepared for them in their way most of us of the youth we have been scared of new things because we're like no i'm i'm young how can i do this i'm that as paul was saying to timothy like don't let anyone you know play with your with your age yeah. it doesn't matter and i think this is what we all started to understand after the conference because he mentioned something that i really love it like whatever the, the apostles could do all that power is in us mm -hmm. you no know? And that has, to be honest, that personally has encouraged me a lot in everything I did. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Well, you know, when I think of, you know, the things that happened, you know, especially when he said, like, we needed that small push, right? That jump mm -hmm. of faith. Uh, but I think, like, for those of you listening, it's not just like, it's, this is not like voodoo or something. You just pray for something, it happens. You, just, you know what I mean? It's not like, uh, oh, I have a problem. That's it. I just pray for it. I'm just going, going uh, uh, uh. Like, this is, you know, you're living a sacrificial life. It's not about you. It's about what God wants, right? It's not about your your plans or your ideas. You're like living in this umbrella of the Almighty Father. Um, but this is so amazing. I think before we end, I think it would be amazing if we could touch the, 
you know, the power of faith in your salvation, like the role faith plays in salvation for probably the few people that have no idea. Um, I don't, do you want to start Sharon or do you want to, do you want to go with it, Abby? No, Sharon, go ahead. Abby can start. Oh, all right. Sharon, I was speaking now. Well, maybe you can expand. Could you, could you expand a bit I more? I expand, expand. Um, okay. So, you know, Jesus is like, you know, have faith that I am the son of God and that I am the sacrificial lamb. Um, and, you know, you have faith in the cross. You can also come into baptism, right? The faith you have when you're being baptized, all those things. So I hope that's enough for you to just jump in. So the so explain the, salvation. Explain, explain what salvation is in a nutshell. What salvation is? Yeah, what your salvation is in just a nutshell. What my salvation is? Like what... what mm, <laughs> let me find a better way to say it. <laughs> so, okay. What's the whole process of salvation? Oh. Right? So, you know, Acts 2 and stuff. Um, repentance, you know, baptism. Yeah. And like, if you think about it, you just, you would be believing in, you need to have faith in doing it. You're not just doing it for the sake of doing it, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's going even, to be true repentance as well. So it's not just, yeah. Um, uh, we, we were learning about it recently and it's not just an emotion that you feel feeling bad about what you've done, but actually an acknowledgement of yeah. your ways and turning away and turning, doing a 180 degrees towards God away from yourself. Um, and then comes obviously uh, faith and baptism, water baptism and, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I went to your baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's power. That's you go in like the, if you read from Acts 2 onwards, yeah. uh, when the power came, that's it. They were moving. Even the way that Peter spoke after they were baptized um, by the Holy Spirit, yeah. the way that he spoke, literally, if you just read all of it, and the first thing they said is they were pierced to the hearts and mm -hmm. they asked, so what should we do? Um, so even that as well, actually knowing and because faith, faith brings that into reality. Like the, I think Lydia one time was saying that, you know, um, I think a revelation that she had is like, imagine going to heaven and seeing all the riches and blessings and just everything that's so awesome about heaven and Jesus and thinking, yeah. actually, I had access to all of that here on earth. Mm. and I could have accessed that and that's mad and I remember from then that like, my prayer was just like God like help me to see this like build my faith to a point where I can see that all these things the spiritual blessings that you speak about in Ephesians 1 that those are accessible to me now and that's is the result of our salvation we're able to lay hands on the sick to heal um, the blind um, the deaf uh, like you said it's not voodoo it's the power of the resurrection power. Yeah, so, I mean, Amen. I don't know if Abby wants to add on to that. <laughs> no, no, I agree with that. 100%. I have nothing. But even like, you know, when we get baptized and mm -hmm. when we are called newborn, it's by faith that we do it. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. It's not like anything special happens into there. It's just yeah. water, to be honest. But it's the faith that you you have that actually changed every single thing in your life no yeah yep. so yeah it's so true i, d I don't know um because just to speak on that quickly yeah yeah i got baptized twice <laughs> well, the first time <laughs> I got baptized, like what 13 14 um and I, I i guess i learned more about that time as i'm growing up but when I got baptized then, I know I didn't have faith. I was just doing it for the sake of doing it. Apparently, Jesus washes you clean, something like that. I didn't really know. Yeah. So I just got baptized, came out the water, and I was like, I don't feel any different. I don't think I'm any different. I don't, yeah. you know. um, <laughs> and actually, my life after that became yeah. way worse. Like, I was entangled with sin for the longest time. And then I got baptized um, 24 February 2019. And when I say, like, even as I was stepping into the water, like, I'd... And just everything that like, I knew exactly what was going on. It was so real to me what Jesus had done for me and what I was doing, the decision that I made. And even after 
I got baptized. The first thing that was on my heart was just to go and pray, like just go and pray by myself. And everybody's crying out to me, congratulations. I was like, no, no, guys, just leave me. <laughs> well I'm gonna go pray. And then I went into one of the small rooms at church and I started praying by myself. And then one by one, like I heard some of my friends come in, oh, and then they saw that I was praying and they started joining me. And one by one, yeah. the room was filled. The presence of God was so heavy in that place. People getting delivered, even after being right. baptized. People were filled with the spirit and speaking in tongues. And so, I, I mean, that's quite a physical or um, difference between the two. Yeah, 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 yeah. But when it's done in faith um, and knowledge is well, it's powerful. It's powerful. Yeah. Well, guys, I guess we're going to end it here. Oh, I man. had such a blessed time. How was it? It's amazing. amazing. I feel like we could talk about this forever. Like, 100%. I think it could have went on for another hour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, praise God. You know, he's given us this chance to speak about this. I'm sure you guys heard the testimonies. I'm like, oh, wow, man. This, this is my God. You know, this is my mm -hmm. father. This is like, mm -hmm. wow. Um, and, you know, if you still don't have this relationship, you know, pursue him in faith. Like, <laughs> this is the creator of heaven and earth looking, you know, giving his mm. son to you. Like, you, you're like, when you think about yourself, it is this one person in this massive country, which is part of this massive earth, <laughs> which is part of, you know, this solar system of eight planets. And then you have the sun, which is 10 times bigger, but that's still small in comparison to the whole galaxy, which is part of other tons of galaxies. <laughs> And now you look at yourself and like, wow, I'm just this tiny speck of dust. But, yeah. you know, God is like, no, you're not. You're my son. Um, yes, and uh, wow. <laughs> How amazing our father is. But, mm -hmm. you know, God bless you all for listening. If you stayed here until this, like this long, it's been two hours. Yeah. God bless you. It's been two hours, right? It's been, it didn't feel like it, though. <laughs> no, it didn't, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see your face again, Abhi. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> but God bless you all, seriously. Uh, and it's lovely having these people, right? I mean, you've heard the testimonies, like this panel is just, it's just wow. Well. Um, and so I think if uh, let's see who wants to pray for us, do you guys want to do a closing prayer? Who feels like they want to have do a closing prayer? I don't mind, yeah. you don't mind? Go on, Shan. All right, go on, Shan. Father God, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you that we have Zoom and this, this means of technology to be able to connect and to speak about you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are a faithful God. That you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that you never changed. You are constant, and so we can put our faith in you. Unshakable foundation. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you have started in this conference, that you've used your vestal, Pastor Isaac, to speak truth and life to us, Lord, and that even now it is burning within us to seek you more, to, to want you more, to pray, to read our word, Lord amen, Jesus. Amen. Thank you that you are doing a work in us. Holy Spirit, we just give you even more of ourselves. We surrender even more of us. And even as people listen to this, this panel discussion, Lord, we offer it up to you in faith that you may move in the hearts of man. Amen, that you may amen. move and ignite something in people to step out in faith this season, to be able to put their trust fully on you because you are a trustworthy God. Lord, we thank you that we even know you, how precious amen, the amen. blood of Jesus is, that we are able to come and to access you whenever whatever we need to Lord. God, God. you are Amen. so amazing and perfect in all of your ways praise be to your name that we have such a privilege to be called sons and daughters of god and Amen. i pray lord that from this day forth your sons and daughters are manifested to the world because creation is waiting to see us creation <laughs> is waiting for the deliverance of souls that we may sing of your praises and glorify you lord jesus Amen. Amen. and lord i pray that we this faith inside of us only grows more and more until the day that you return. Amen. That when we see Amen. you, we know that we have done everything possible through your mighty name that we are able to. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you have started. May you bless it in your holy name. In your mighty Amen. name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh my Amen. God. God bless you. All right, guys. I got to say bye. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, man. Bye, 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 bye. Bless every single one of you. Uh, and yeah, see you soon. Bye.